Hello mate and welcome back to Let's Code Season 4, this time it's personal. In this episode we're going to carry on building our contextual menu. As you can see I've currently got Photoshop open. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that always helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. If you are interested in supporting the channel, feel free to visit the Patreon in the description down below, or you can simply join the channel and become a member by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. So let's jump into this then. So what I've got here is a little button that I've created. It's a simple square 48 by 48 pixels. And then I've used the bevel and emboss to give it a nice highlight around one side. And this is going to be my template. I can put icons that I want onto various different buttons here. But for now, I'm just going to save one and call it default.png. Remembering, of course, to use the file extension that we've created in our icon file in our class. So there we go. We've got UI buttons context and then default.png. So that's where I'm going to save it. And with that done, now we can play around with our buttons a little bit more. Now, if you'll notice, I've still got the nice name property and that's going to come in really handy because that's going to be the tooltip that's going to happen when we hover over our button. So we're in a situation now where we can actually create one of our contextual screens. So as you remember, we created our contextual generic screen with Transclude there. So what we need to do now is create a new screen. And what I'm going to do is actually put a new folder in our screens and I'm just going to call it contextual. If I can remember how to spell contextual, <laughs> create a new folder. And then inside there, we're going to create a new file. And this one's just going to be called contextual. And um, we're going to call this one, we'll call this one default for now. And we can apply a different name to it later. So screen context underscore default like so and now what we're going to do is we're going to use and remember that we've got this name here so we'll just copy that and we're going to paste it in here use contextual generic now we're going to say a uh, vp grid i think and we're going to start defining the properties of the grid now in our VP grid, we can put various properties in there. For now, I'm just going to say that it's going to have four columns across. Spacing, I'm going to have that set to about 10, and we can adjust that again later, dependent on our needs. Um, draggable, it's going to be false because we don't want it to be moved. So we're going to say draggable, false. Mouse wheel, it's going to be false as well. We don't want scroll bars. So we're going to say that's false as well for Q in uh, UI buttons. I'm actually putting pseudocode in there for a sec because I need to come back and look at our classes and find out what that variable is actually called. It's UI buttons. They're like that. And then we can just paste that over there. Now we're going to create an image button. And inside that image button, we're going to give it an idle and a hovered or hover value. We're also gonna say, we don't need to say focus mask is true because it's a square button, so there is no empty space within it. We need to give it a tooltip value. So we're going to say hovered action. Um, sorry, I need to add TT. So we need to say TT dot action. Oh my goodness me. All right, let's try that again. TT dot action. And we're just going to Add that in there, and then we're going to say uh, Q dot nice name, so that it's just going to hover over it. And it's going to tell us what our nice name is. So we also need to set this to Q icon. Come back to our class, find out that that's actually a small i. So we'll just copy and paste that over the top of that, and then Q dot icon in there as well. The next thing we're going to do is say uh, action. And we're going to set the variable variable and the click type. Some of you may remember that variable from a previous version of this uh, of, of Let's Code. And we're going to set that to be a UI button, like so. And then we're going to return the value 
of Q dot, and let's just have a look and see what properties we've got that we can play with. And we've got types, nice name, name, stat. So I think we're just going to return the name. That'll probably be the easiest thing to do. Although, hmm, interesting. I think what we're going to do actually do is add another. We're going to have a function there like that. And the reason I want to do that is because name is also what we get our file name from. And, and until we create individual icons, we need to call that default. So we don't want it to call the default every single time. So we can go with that for now. So that's going to say q.func. So what's going to happen is it's going to display an image using the icon that we've defined. And it's going to display the tooltip. And then it's also going to return it's going to tell the click type to be UI button and then it's going to return whatever value we put in funk. At the moment, that's probably not going to make a huge amount of sense to you. And that's because we need to create a tooltip screen first. So let's go into our screens. We're going to create a new file. We'll call this tooltips.rpy and we're going to call it screen tooltip screen. There we go. And we're going to say if tt.value is not the same as nothing, then we're going to create a frame. We're going to give it an X align of 0.5. Going to give it a Y pos of about 85. And in that, we're going to have a VBox. And inside that VBox, we're going to put text. And then inside the text, we're going to put tt.value like that and we can play around with changing those values later on but for now that's our tooltip screen completed so we can copy that go into our main ui again and we're going to say if tt is not the same as nothing in fact no we don't need to do that at all we've already got that in the screen so we're just going to say use tooltip screen save now the next thing we need to do is to create our to tool our tool tip so we need to come into our defaults and define so we're going to go default tt equals tool tip and give that an empty value like so cool so everything's in place for our tool tip we should have a fairly working screen i would advise you at this point before we go any further into the crazy amounts of code that we've written to go through, check for typos, and check that all of our values match our variables. You're also going to need to create a default background image, just like in our classes file. If you remember, when we had big image check, we ran it, we checked this folder for our file name. And if the file name didn't exist, then it would return backgrounds forward slash default underscore bg dot jpeg. You need to create this because currently we don't have any locations and therefore we don't have any backgrounds for those locations. So create a default image file. I've already done one. As you can see, our frames appeared nicely here. Currently nothing in it because we haven't created a list of buttons and our, de and our default background image is looking like that. So what you want to do, go ahead and do those things and then jump back in and pick up where we left off. So now that we've got that bit of our game working, what we now need to do is actually create some buttons. So we're going to add some stuff to our list. So we're going to say UI buttons dot append. And then we need to come back to our classes file. Now we need to get this UI button class here. And we need to get all of these properties. So I'm just going to copy that from there. I might do it here. Oh, no, come back to here. And in there, we're going to add UI button as our class open some more brackets and what i'm going to do same as i did before put a hash in there and then there we go now we know what our values are going to be i'm going to double check the value of that name the class name because i want to make sure that i get that absolutely right so now we've got name name is going to be default and that is because that is the name of the button that we created before so we'll leave that as default for now Next thing we need to give it is a nice name. So in this case, we're going to call it button just for the sake of that. And then we need to give it types so we can just create an empty list for that for now. And multiply, we'll just put one stat. 
we'll just put an empty string for now and then function so in this case let's just in fact give this a name so we're going to call this uh, talk this button is going to be the talk button and the function is going to be talk now we need to copy and paste this line so we need to uh, insert a re return and let's just create six buttons for now so we've got talk we'll go we'll we'll say flirt we'll say play then we'll say fight just for funsies and we'll say uh, what else can we have there what other actions can we have we'll put eat obviously not eating a person but taking them to dinner and then we've got work out there as well so now we need to change the values here so this one's going to be flirt this one's going to be play this one's going to be fight this one's going to be eat and this one is going to be work out cool so now we've got one two three four five six buttons let's see if they appear in our ui and what we'll find is the answer is a big fat no and that's because there are some other adjustments that we need to make in order for this to work First thing we need to do is actually address the correct thing. So we, you've got format name here. We actually need to put self.name into there and we make sure that we've got the spellings here correct, which we appear to have. Yep, UI buttons, contextual, and then our name.png. So that's fine. Also, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to change this icon property a little bit more. And I'm going to say if renpy.loadable uh, output text like that then return output text and then otherwise we're just going to return the value of the default button which coincidentally is the button that we're looking for so we're just going to copy all of this paste it in there get rid of that extra one and we'll just change this to default.png and of course, we can double check that that file actually exists as well by again going into our RemPy code. When we run our script, we can go into the developer console and we can type the command that I have typed above. Print RemPy.loadable UI buttons contextual default.png. And as you can see, it's returning true, which means it can see the file. So we know that that is in fact in the correct place. And the last thing that we need to do that we haven't done yet is actually call this label here. So we're going to just double click that, copy that, and we're going to paste it into the front here. As you'll notice, I have actually created a little mini game loop. So all I've done is I've set the playing variable to true. We've created a variable called playing, so it's true. And then we're saying while playing, and then we're saying UI return equals rempi.call underscore screen main UI. So all we're doing is we're telling rempi to display the main UI screen on our screen so if you want to go ahead and copy that bit of code I'd highly recommend that you do that so now when we run our code we can see that some things have changed our buttons are now all appearing and when we hover over them we get a rather weirdly large <laughs> tooltip there so we can go into our code and we can change that so that it doesn't look quite so mental so let's do that now we can come into our code here and we're going to go into our tooltip screen and as you can see, we've got a frame, we've got all of these things, but we haven't actually, in fact, we don't really need the VBox, so we'll do that. And then we can say, save that. Let's reload this and see if that makes any difference. There you go, much better, much less bonkers. So we've got these weird, annoying bars on the side there. We'll get rid of those in a moment, but as you can see, the buttons are there. And when we hover over them, we are golden our our tool tips are working and our ui is there you'll notice that the box for the ui is actually pretty massive as well so the chances are we're probably going to reduce the size of those as well so firstly to remove our those annoying scroll bars let's just delete the whole line saying scroll bars save our code and then it won't reference them at all and then when we come back in you can see absolutely fine that's removed those so that's cool so as i said remember that this is currently displaying the default button if we were to change the name of the buttons, it would still display those. 
because there are no existing alternatives. So in fact, let's do that to demonstrate this point. So we're going to come back to our defaults and defines. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that, paste that there, 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 that one, and that one, that one, and that one. And then if we save it, we can come back to our screen and you'll notice that the buttons haven't disappeared. And that is because it is going to our class and it's saying, if the file doesn't exist, display the default one instead. So that's good. So that's working just fine. Next thing we really ought to do is in our script file, we need to check whether or not the click type is in fact UI button. Now we can say, if click type equals equals UI button, then we're going to do something. And let's just go back to our context default, check that we are in fact returning the correct value, checking for it. And that seems to be working just fine. So now what we need to do is we need to actually create some kind of label. So what we can do is go to, uh, let's just create a label text equals. We're going to put curly braces underscore curly braces. And that's going to work. I think, yeah, that's cool for now anyway. And then we're going to say dot format and we're going to invoke the variables selected because if you remember, that's going to be a person's name. And then we're going to say UI return. It's going to be the second value there. If renpy dot has underscore label, uh, label text, then call expression label text. If not, then it's not going to do anything. That's cool. Happy days. So at the moment, selected is null and void because there are no characters for us to select. But further down the line, we can create different procedures or different labels for when you select or when you try to do something with each different person. Is that when we hover over our buttons, we still get our tooltips. When we click on them, nothing happens because we don't currently have any labels. So that about brings us to the end of this episode, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We'll be doing some more experimenting with UI stuff in the next episode. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.